We come this day to worship and praise God for all that he has done for us. Let us now usher him into our hearts by listening to the choir. Is 
in the valley. Oh, oh, all the saints of God. It's in the valley. is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein lift up your heads O ye gates even lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the Lord of hosts he is the king of glory. Praise his holy name. Mm. Mm -mm. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for this day and for your presence in our midst. In the name of Jesus, we submit it all. Amen. Now we'll have another selection from the Ministry of Music.
going to ask Deacon Ray Hobbs to come with scripture and prayer. And if you'll please stand to your feet. Good morning, New Zion family and friends. Good morning. To God be the glory. Uh, this morning I will be coming to you from uh, 1 John, the 4th chapter, and the 11th through the uh, 19th verse. Beloved, if God so love us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may be boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love him because he first loved us. If a man say I love God and hate of his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? May God add a blessing to the reading of his red word. Let us go to the throne of grace. <clears throat> Father God, we come this morning, O oh Lord God, as empty vessels before a full fountain. Realizing that you are God all alone and you are God all by yourself. We just want to thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. And we thank you that you woke us up this morning, not on the chilly side of Jordan. And we just want to thank you, Lord, for last night's rest, Lord, that you kept danger out as you stood within, Lord. We just want to thank you for your tender grace and your mercy, Lord. Right now, Lord, we come this day, O oh Lord, in intercessory prayer for those, O oh Lord, who have come this morning that may be brokenhearted. There may be downtrodden. Those, oh Lord God, who have not slept all night long, Lord, because they worried about one thing or the other. But we know that we serve a God. We serve a God that sits high and he looks low. We serve a God that is faithful. He's faithful in everything. And we just want to say thank you. Right now, Lord, we ask for protection and provision, O Lord, for those who are going through right now, Lord. Father God, can nobody do us like Jesus. Lord God, even when the hellhounds try to go on our path, Lord, we heard you say, be still and know that I am God. To God be the glory. Father God, right now we want to ask, oh God, intercessory prayer for our children and grandchildren, Lord. They are going through challenges right now, Lord. Every day as they leave out their house, Lord, they are facing peer pressure, Lord. And they don't know what to do, Lord. But Lord, right now, Lord, we will put the hedge of protection around them, Lord. We will give them intercessory prayer. For we heard what you said in your word that no weapon, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we stand on your word and we stand on your promises, Lord. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you will forgive us all for our sins. Forgive us for our hopefulness. Forgive us for our unrighteousness, Lord. For God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we serve a mighty God. We ask now, Lord, that you will bless this shepherd of this house, Lord, that he will bring bread, O oh Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we will go out better than what we came in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I just want to thank you. May your Holy Spirit Go through this place, Lord, and may we ask in Jesus' name, Lord, for your forgiveness. Father God, this is our prayer in the name of our Lord and our risen Savior. Oh, Lord, I want to say this. Forgive me. I pray for the bereaved families, Lord, those who are going through it right now, Lord. I know that you will give them a comfort and peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do in our lives. This is our prayer, and let the redeem of the Lord say amen.
like fervent prayer. Now it is giving time. It's a time when we all can participate in the service. And if you are not in the sanctuary this morning, you can use your giver fine. Or you may mail it to the church, or you may come by the church during the week from 10 to 3 to give your offerings. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, herein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings. But we say, bring all your tithes unto the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. We're going to ask now that the trustees and the ushers come forth, and if you will follow their directions, we'll ask sections one and three if you will stand first. Time. 
said amen amen how many are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning with all that is going on in the world the Lord spared us one more chance one more chance to worship and to praise him one more chance to get it right some things are going on in our own lives that needs the, uh, the Lord's attention uh, so aren't you glad that you are able, willing and able to receive the Lord this morning in this place of worship? Come on, let's put our hands together and give God some glory. I'm just happy to be here this morning. Glad to be in the number one more time. Amen and amen. I want to certainly take this opportunity to welcome all of our visitors here. Would you just stand up if you're visiting for the first time? Uh, we would like for you to stand. Amen. All over the place. We are glad that you are here. We are glad that you are here. Thank you for coming and worshiping with the New Zion family this morning. You may be seated. We are always encouraged uh, when visitors come and if you don't have a church home I want you to consider New Zion as your church home um, we are a loving congregation uh, we're not a perfect church but we show enough a good one and we certainly uh, welcome you to come and to be a part of us we would love to have you and um, we have pretty good ministry going on. Can I toot, toot my own horn? 
is that appropriate on live stream and everywhere else? There's so much, um, so many opportunities to expand uh, in worship and grow in the Lord here at New Zion. All of the Bible studies, the Sunday school studies, uh, um, people are, are coming and being blessed uh, online and uh, virtual, however you need it. Uh, we are learning how to dispense it and give it to you. So um, we want to invite you to come. We're doing a lot with the youth now. The youth ministry is evolving and we are excited about the possibilities that lie even with the teen ministry. They met with me. They came up in the study and let me know some of the things that they would like to see. I enjoyed those moments of engagement. It was wonderful. Amen. So we do welcome you this morning. This morning we would like to start by thanking everyone who came out for Narcissa's right on yesterday. Uh, and I'm sure that she's appreciative and she's going to let you know how appreciative she is in person uh, when time will permit. Um, and you know, she was just blessed. I was blessed because she was blessed. And you just showed much love uh, on yesterday, uh, gathered in the fellowship hall. I had a wonderful time. The food was great. So I want to thank all of those who prepared and whatever you did, uh, gave um, just to make her feel good. Man, when, look here, when, when, when mama is happy, the whole house is happy. Can I get an amen in here? <laughs> so, so yeah, John didn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, and so we thank you so much for that lovely um, appreciation that you uh, extended to her and my family on yesterday. Um, we certainly, on a sad note, we, prayers are in order for Sister Denny Hill and her husband, um, they lost, uh, she lost her son, Bobby Locke, earlier this week. And um, she's going through it. Denny, if you're watching, uh, you and Doug know that we are praying your strength in the Lord. Um, the service for Bobby will be here at the church on Tuesday. And also, please remember um, others who are going through, keep the McCray family lifted up as they lost a loved one, Mr. Laverne McCray, who was um, funeralized earlier this week. Uh, we would also like to mention the homegoing service, of, again, of um, Ruth White, um, we're going to miss her from here, but we know that um, she's in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The service was beautiful and a very touching tribute to a remarkable life. And I believe Joyce and Rick are here today. I saw them seated in the seat. Yeah, God bless you. Uh, we love you, and we know that... God's uh, comforting hand will be upon you uh, as you uh, now must um, worship in different places. She's worshiping in one place and you're worshiping in another. Let the church say amen. Uh, the senior ministry is planning their 2024 senior trip. It's time to explore Charleston and learn about a little more about our African-American history and where we've come from, uh, the vantage point of a Charlestonian. From that, we learn more about who we are. 
uh, the dates for this trip are Monday, September the 16th through Wednesday, September the 18th. The costs will vary based upon the number traveling. Uh, the costs will include bus transportation, hotel accommodations, tickets uh, for activities. So if you are interested in going, please contact Sister Vera Brooks. Where is Vera? That's, that, that she is right there. You see Vera, if you're interested in going. And uh, also Sister Edith Hines. Is Edith in the house? Amen. And they both um, have contact information and make sure that um, you are properly taken care of. Uh, April is Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month. Parkinson's is a neurological condition uh, that worsens over time and causes problems with movement. Uh, my mother suffered with Parkinson's uh, before she passed away. Uh, mental health, uh, sleep, pain, and other health issues are also associated with Parkinson's. Uh, the cause of Parkinson's is unknown and there is no cure. It is a disease that affects 500,000 Americans, including some of our close loved ones and friends. For more information on Parkinson's, we want you to check out the fact sheet uh, on, your, uh, on page three of the New Zion newsletter that is printed every um, week, and um, you will learn more about it. For those members who are not aware, we have a group of young students from North Carolina A&T State University who are volunteering on a regular basis at our Dorothy Hyde Food Pantry. They are collectively called the Nine Dime Aggies. <laughs> uh, they are holding a can of food drive, they are um, uh, holding a canned food drive on campus in an effort to support our food pantry. The food drive will run from April 10th to April 15th on campus at the Student Center. Uh, we will also accept donations here at the church Monday through Friday from 10 to 3. And we have a slamming a uh, food bank that's doing what churches should do and that is feed the hungry along with other things the social engagements uh, that are made there and relationships are engendered that are lasting relationships thank you again Deacon Hunter and staff this Saturday, April 13th, the marriage ministry date night to Bond Dinner Theater. Seating will begin at six for dinner and the stage play, Sing Hallelujah. Uh, you'll sure be a night to remember. So uh, marriage ministry, those who have already prepared, uh, we want to alert you that April the 13th is the Bond Dinner Theater. Registration on the next marriage ministry outing will strike up some fun bowling. We're going to bowl the night away. Um, the outing is scheduled for May 11th, and the cost is $12.99 per bowler to include two hours of bowling, shoe rental, and all that you need. See um, Dr. Butler immediately following the morning service out in the gathering area. Today now is the last day of registration, so we invite all of the widows and uh, those who are engaged to join us. You are not excluded, but you are included, and we want to make sure that you are there. Let the church say amen. I um, did not mention this on last Sunday. Forgot to mention it. 
But I want to thank all of our associate ministers for the seven last word service. Amen. I'm so proud. I watched it on how God used our associate ministers here. Uh, we are truly blessed by them. And I want to thank Dr. Marilyn King Lewis for organizing and coordinating such a powerful event. Thank you, Marilyn. We appreciate it. Amen. I'm going to talk about just a minute, uh, just a moment, the seeds in service. And, uh, but I want, I want you to pray for two members who are to go under surgery. Uh, Deacon Clyde Rattler. Where is he? He usually sits over here somewhere. I don't know if he's here today, but if you're watching, uh, we are praying that God would meet you in, in the hospital room and guide the skillful hands of the surgeons. Also, Sister Alice Evans will be going into surgery, and we're going to pray that God would carry you successfully through the surgery that you need. I uh, know uh, Brother Clyde, that, who is the new member, by the way, and Sister Alice, that you are loved and you are certainly valued here in New Zion. I want to comment the last thing uh, on seeds and service. Uh, this initiative uh, has already begun. I want to thank all of the members who have participated in Seeds and Service to this point. Uh, for the first quarter of uh, 2024, we've had thus far recorded and documented about 40 participants, uh, 40 projects dedicating uh, uh, approximately 30 hours of service time. And I know that there are some that have occurred that are not documented. Uh, now, we want to see more involvement. We want to see you catch fire behind this initiative. Uh, this is a great start, but we don't want to stop here. We're going to keep on pushing. Uh, some of the types of projects that New Zion has participated in are I think there were eight projects in the school system. I don't know whether that was mentoring or how you served, but that was outside of the bounds of New Zion. There were five projects with civic organizations. There were five projects with the homeless and underprivileged. Five projects with hospitals or the sick and shut in. Five projects supporting fellow church members two projects with grieving families, and one project supporting mental health. And this is just to name a few. We've had a great start. However, we want everybody to become involved in seed and service in some way. And it's simple. It's just reaching out beyond uh, the walls of the church <laughs> out into the community. And when everybody begins some kind of service initiative, think what that does for the church and how God will continue to bless. The seed and service team will be available in the gathering area once uh, we give benediction. And if you have any questions about how to get involved, in seeds and service, I want you to stop by there and say, what can I do? How is it? What is this? And how can I participate? Amen. We want you to become informed, but not only informed, but involved. Let the church say amen. amen. We also want to mention uh, prayer for Ricky, our guitarist, 
Uh, his nephew, Olin Kellum, was involved in a serious car accident. And I think, did he, is he deceased? And he passed away from that uh, over in our community recently. And we want to um, ask prayers for that young man that God would bless and keep his family. Let the church say amen. A scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the gospel as recorded by John. For those of us who have our Bibles, and we're going to read several scriptures related to the one that is posted, which is John 21 and 9. But we're going to begin uh, at the first verse using the Amplified Bible. After this, Jesus let himself be seen and revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And he did it in this way. That were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel from Cana of Galilee, also the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I'm going fishing. They said unto him, and we are coming with you. So they went out got into the boat and throughout the night they caught nothing. Morning was already breaking when Jesus came to the beach and stood there. However, the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said unto them, boys, children, do you have any meat and fish? Do you? Have you caught anything to eat along with your bread? They answered him, no. <laughs> and he said unto them, cast your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast their nets and now they were not able to haul in for such a big catch. A mass quantity of fish was in the net. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. Simon Peter, hearing him, said that it was the Lord. He put on his upper garment his coat and entered into the water and sprang into the sea. And verse 8 says, and the other disciples came in uh, the small boat, for they were not far from the shore, only some hundred yards away, dragging the nets full of fish. And the last verse for your hearing, when they got out of on land, the beach, they saw a fire of coals there and fish lying on it, cooking and bread. Thus end of the reading of his word. You may kindly be seated in the presence of the Lord.
pray for me. And watch God change the name. And watch God change the Oh, you'll get it in a few minutes. You pray for me. And watch God. Somebody's got it. Oh, somebody's getting it. You pray for me. And just watch. Maybe I need one or two witnesses in here who's had some history with God who are not afraid to let the world know that I'm a recipient, a beneficiary of God's amazing grace. Oh, won't you stand to your feet and bless the Lord right now. If you've ever been prayed for, and you felt God working through that prayer nothing moved until prayers were rendered but once prayers were rendered things began to happen <laughs> because God does hear Edith and answer prayer do I have a witness in here won't, won't, he, won't he answer your prayer <laughs> Won't he meet you at the very point of your need? Randy, you know what I'm talking about. Won't God do it, Steve? Won't he do it? Won't he do it, Roy? You know. Won't he do it, church? for you and then you watch oh bless his name come on can you give God a thundering applause of gratitude won't he do it church won't he do it LaRue Oh, yes, he will. He's a prayer answering God. Amen. And amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Bless his name right now. Oh, bless his name. Amen and Amen. When they got out of the boat on to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish lying on it cooking. and bread I want to use as a subject dinner is ready dinner 
is ready. I'm sure that there has been a time in your family when someone shouted, dinner is ready. That was a time when everybody stopped, cleaned up, and came to the table to eat. It was a ritual in my family that at six o'clock in the evening in the house of W.F. Wright Sr., you better be somewhere around close because at six you were expected as a family to be around the dinner table. It was a time when we dined together, whether it was breakfast or especially supper. The dining room table was the place where the family sat to connect not only with each other, but we were allowed to share our dreams, accomplishments, whatever went on that day, whether at school or at play, and also talk about the plans for our future. Generally, negative conversations were off limits around the dinner table. Business uh, failures or problems, uh, all that was for another time. It was dinner time. It was time to eat and enjoy the fellowship of each other. Dinner time was needed because around the dinner table, the family bonded and became close. And as the years passed, the dining room table became a beautiful piece of furniture that was used only at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Fewer families uh, together now eat around the, the, the table because everybody runs to the breakfast nook. Uh, some have just one meal a day together. Some have none. Uh, the chant uh, uh, has a, a different meaning now. Uh, for some, uh, the call to dinner uh, is a call uh, uh, to rattle through boxes of Popeye's chicken, uh, fried mashed potatoes and fries, or uh, to get their favorite piece on a plate, on a napkin maybe, before it's all gone. For other dinners uh, means uh, food uh, that is in a pot on the stove and everybody is free to fix their own plate whenever it pleases them. Some may eat when uh, it all gets uh, you know, ready uh, or some may eat later on. Uh, they are uh, at a point in life where family gatherings are not so important anymore. Uh, not so when I came up. You had to eat around the table. My dad said, you're not going to eat all over this house. Uh, don't even think about gathering a plate and running to your room because that draws ants and other critters you got to eat in one place and that's around the table uh, and in Narcissa's home if you didn't like what was cooked her daddy would say root hog or die <laughs> which means that we're not cooking anything else for you you got to eat what is placed on the table. Anybody was raised in homes like that, yeah, didn't eat all over the house. You ate where there was association and fellowship embedded in the announcement is one truth, that food will be ready. Someone somewhere uh, has sacrificed 
labored under a hot cook stove, uh, uh, started early that morning unthawing stuff so that you could eat and you're going to come in and turn your nose up? I don't think so. Food does not prepare itself. In the African-American experience, when we talk about soul food, it's not some microwave stuff. <laughs> Do I have a witness in here? Yeah, it's not something that you throw in and hit a button and draw it out and dump it on a plate somewhere. Uh, love goes into soul cooking. It's slow in methodical. It's recipes born over many years. Uh, that are still remembered uh, by moms and dads everywhere. It takes time uh, to cook some good old pinto beans. Uh, you know, you don't open a can. You can have all of that. I want something that you got to uh, tear out of a bag and you got to take out the bad ones and put them in some water and let them set overnight. Am I right about it, Reverend? Uh, and let them swell up uh, and then put them in the crock pot. And when you say crock pot, uh, that, that's not an easy fry thing that they have now uh, that works, so, you know, in a matter of a few minutes. No, it's slow cooking. Put you some fat back or some hog jaw down in there. You got some real eating right there. Uh, and dinner is sure enough served up. Don't you get hungry. Y'all wait on me now. Because I didn't get to the cornbread. Folk buy them dinner rolls. And they got some pretty good dinner rolls. But when my wife gets that contraption and mixes up some cornbread and pour it in and put it in the oven, and when she pulls that out, let me get you good and hungry. And, and when it gets, gets, gets cool enough to slice, and when you open it up, that steam just jumps up. And you grab a knife and cut a, hook of, a hunk, hunk of butter and, and cut it, Barbara, and open it up and put that butter in and close it right up. Am I right about it, Rock? We'll, we'll, we'll make your tongue smack your brains out. I'm, I'm telling you. Dinner is ready. Do I have a witness? <laughs> you know about that Lewisburg. Dinner is sure enough ready. Embedded in this announcement is one truth. For food to be ready, somebody had to sacrifice. Food does not prepare itself. Jesus often shared meals with his disciples. Hungry guests, crowds, uh, even tax collectors. He was criticized. Because people said, uh, Dr. McMaster, that he was hanging around the wrong folk. Uh, he was eating with publicans and sinners. But it was Jesus' way of connecting with them, staying in touch and communing with them. And before he died, he had one last meal with his disciples. And after the resurrection, he prepared, uh, appeared rather among them when it was time to die. His presence was a constant reminder that he loved them, was always with them, and would always provide for them. Now spiritually, whenever the church celebrates the Lord's Supper, 
uh, the call goes out to the faithful and those who know, know the Lord to gather, to fellowship, and to celebrate, and most importantly, to connect with each other. We are reminded of the importance of connecting with Christ through the Lord's Supper. The meal is ready and the call has been given that any man, anybody who would, let them come. That's why I wrestled with this text because it focuses on the moment after the resurrection in which Jesus prepared a meal for his disciples. You need to read that. After the crucifixion of Christ, the disciples were distraught. They were frustrated. Peter says, I'm going fishing. We always revert back to that which we are familiar with. Uh, and six of the other disciples said, well, Peter, that sounds like a good idea. We're going with you. Thomas uh, called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana of Galilee and the sons of Zebedee. And the Bible says two other disciples. And I thought for a minute now, why were not they named? And maybe uh, that included you and I centuries across. Uh, those who were still loyal to the cause, but not named in any text. They fish. All night long, that they fished, and the Bible says, Bert, that they caught absolutely nothing. Not even a bite, Evelyn, not, 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 not a nibble. Now, I've been fishing at night. I, I fished on the ocean. I, I fished in ponds. I fished in, in canals. I, I, I fished everywhere. Daddy was a fisherman. And there were times when the fish just were not biting. They fished all night. And at daybreak, uh, with weeping eyes and a hazy mist developing over the fishing area, the Sea of Tiberias, Jesus stood on the beach and watched them. <laughs> he saw, you know, they saw Jesus, but they did not know who he was. He called out to them, children, have ye to eat? They yelled back that we have nothing to eat because they caught nothing. So Jesus told them, to cast your net on the right side of the boat. Is that in the text? And still not knowing who Jesus was, they followed the suggestion because often a person on the shore could see the movement of large groups of fish in clear water that were not yet visible to those in the boat. Uh, now, I like to believe that that might have been the case, but I like the miracle part of it, that Jesus knew where the fish were. <laughs> And says, you fishing on the wrong side. You fishing on the left. When I, I want you to cast your nets on the right side of the boat. Sometimes it's about being obedient. It's not putting everything under a microscope to see how Jesus does what he does. I'm not interested in that. I, I, I just want to know that when I pray, God will hear and answer prayer. I don't care, Lord, how you do it. Just do it for me. Do I have a witness? Anybody in here not interested in all of the technical theories of whether fish were on the left or the right? Uh, we've labored here all night long and ain't got a bite nowhere. Excuse my Ebonics fam, uh, but we are still fishing. 
So, so John saw with the other disciples, still not knowing who Jesus was, they, 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 they followed Jesus' instructions because he had a commanding voice. And to their surprise, when they cast their nets on the other side, they brought in a tremendous catch. The Bible says 153. Am I right about it? And as they tugged uh, on the nets, John then recognized the man on the bank as Jesus. And he told Peter, he said, Peter, <laughs> that's Jesus. When they considered the resurrection and this amazing instructions to fish uh, on the other side of the boat, they put two and two together and suddenly recognize that Christ is the Lord. That's who, who's here. And sometimes we labor day and night, but we don't recognize that the Lord is already there. Sometimes we pray hard. And while we are praying, we don't realize that God is already answering our prayer. Peter jumped into the water, began swimming toward the bank to meet Jesus. The other disciples followed in a little boat, pulling their net of fish. And when they had reached land, they discovered uh, that a small meal had been prepared exclusively for them. They, they saw hot coals as well as fish frying uh, and bread baking on the coals. Jesus told them to bring their huge catch to shore. And they noticed that such a large catch uh, did not break the nets. That, 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 that too uh, was a miracle. Jesus said unto them, come now and break your fast. That, that just, that, that's where breakfast came from. It, it break the fast. Uh, Jesus took bread and gave them fish for breakfast. Now, baptized imagination of the preacher, we like to say that Jesus opened up a delicatessen on the shore and he, and he was giving away fish sandwiches. Now, you can't tell me uh, that one of them didn't open that bread and put that fish in. <laughs> Do I have a witness? So, somebody, at least Peter, somebody. Uh, I know I'm straying a little bit, uh, but, but I, I can imagine that somebody uh, opened it up and put that good fish in there. Uh, however, uh, yet yeah, Jesus made available that which they needed and they were comfortable as to his identity and the surety of his resurrection. Well, sometimes miracles happen all around us as God moves situation and circumstances to provide for those who trust him. These believers were losing hope. Jesus performed these acts to reassure them that all was not lost. And sometimes in life, we just need uh, a glimmer of hope. We, we, we need the assurance that, that you know it's dark now, but behind the dark clouds, uh, the sun is going to shine. Everybody talking about the eclipse. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's all right. Uh, uh, but I'm so glad that behind 
around the moon. Uh, in about four minutes, the sun is going to shine again. I uh, don't matter how dark and desolate your particular situation is. Uh, don't you dare despair uh, because if you know anything about the Lord, the sun will shine after a while. Do I have a witness in here? Somebody who's been down and out, uh, uh, down to your last dime, penniless, did not know where your next meal uh, was coming from, couldn't pay the light bill, uh, and some way, somehow, God uh, yeah, heard your plaintive cry and provided resources. You didn't know where they were coming from. You just opened up your hand and your heart, and God delivered some way and somehow. He performs miracles that, that, that were coals burning. The scripture does not tell us about a fire at this instance on, on the beach, only about the coals. Had there been a fire built, the disciples would have seen it in the night. Anybody know anything about fire knows that they are, are, are hot coals underneath the fire. And given a little breath of air, the potential for fire is always there with those hot coals. Sometimes when you're cooking a pig, you want hot coals. You don't want blazing fire that burns. You want those hot coals after the fire subsides. You want to scatter those and, 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 and keep, continue to cook that pig. Believers who have suffered losses and disappointments ought to take note of this truth that while we often think the cause is loss, we should consider the coals underneath. And if the Spirit of God breathes on it, I declare uh, those coals can be rekindled and flame again. No matter how de 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 desolate you are, no matter how traumatizing the event, God is able to breathe on you. Do I have a witness in here? And if he breathes on you, uh, those coals can come back to life. Do I have a witness here? Uh, the joy will come back in your life the peace will come back into your life and let's consider the fish the disciples came to land uh, with cold uh, weary hungry and they found a good warming fire dried themselves off then they saw the fish and the bread competent provisions for a good meal. The fish demonstrated God's ability to provide for them despite their hard time and struggling all night. And out of nowhere, there was fish on the coals and fish in the nets. Just as God supplied Elijah with food from ravens or crows, feeding him when he needed, he had water by the brook, God will also provide for you and I. Our God provides for us, doesn't he, church? He knows our wants. He gave them one fish. And he blessed them with 153. We bless God with a life of service. And God blesses us with eternity. Christ prepared a meal for them that chilly morning. And that ought to remind each and every one of us. Every morning God gives new blessings. Every morning God gives uh, uh, new mercies. Great is thy faithfulness. And then there is the bread. The disciples found bread baking on the coals. Not just fish, but bread. My mama used to tell me, say, you need to eat some bread with this fish with the bones in it because 
if you swallow one, the bread or catch it or something like that. I ain't figured that out yet. The meal had been ground for the bread, sifted and kneaded. It had been pushed, rolled, squeezed, modeled, molded, and was ready. This is significant to the disciples because Christ told them that I am the bread of life. His crucifixion and resurrection was the kneading uh, of the bread, needed to guarantee eternal life. He had risen and he was ready just as the bread was ready for the coals. And in the upper room, Christ celebrated what some call the Last Supper. He took the cup of wine and blessed it and, and said this represents his blood and would be shed for salvation of the world. He also took the bread, broke it and blessed it and said this is my body which will be given for you thus the bread that is ready has a powerful message to you and I. It means our provision is ready. It means our salvation is ready. It means our new home and glory is ready. The bread on the coal wasn't just any bread. It was godly bread. God's bread gives us strength when we are weak. God's bread gives us inspiration when we get frustrated and confuse hope uh, uh, to the hopeless uh, God's bread uh, renews us uh, when we are in despair God's bread is quicker than whole cake uh, while we are still praying uh, help is on the way uh, his bread is lighter than light bread those who are wandering in the dark uh, will find that he is the light of the world God's bread is sweeter than raisin bread his goodness takes uh, the bitterness of the hard times uh, uh, and sweetens our taste. Uh, no wonder why the songwriter said, I found a savior and he's sweet I know. Storm clouds may rise, strong winds may blow, but I have a savior and I know he's sweet I know. And finally my brothers and sisters, before I leave you, I want to announce, Deaconess, that the table is set. We want to thank you. When God sets the table, you know that dinner is ready. And while the disciples were out fishing, God was setting the table. When they had tried their best, toiling all through uh, the night, but then came up with empty nets. God was setting the table. They did not see him when he lit the fire. They did not see him when he laid fish on the coal. They did not see him, uh, but standing on the beach was the bread of life saying, the table is set, breakfast is ready. And since the beginning of time, God has been preparing the table for us, making things right from the beginning of time. There are no fancy tablecloths, no shiny silverware, but everything is on the table. Everything that we need, Jesus knows how to set a table. First of all, he surveys our valleys and our lonesome trails and said, I'm going to put some valley food on the table. He measures our mountains as they reach the peaks pointing toward heaven and says, I need to put some mountain climbing nuggets on the table. He calculates our losses and said, I'm going to put some victory food on the table. Uh, he comprehends our sorrows and said, I'm going to put some happiness and some joy on the table. Uh, he inventories 
inventories, our mix-ups and our mistakes and our blurbs and says, I'm going to put some forgiveness and some correction on the table. He counts our failures and said, I'm going to put some success food on the table. And when God lays out the dinner table, he prepares so much that there's always some leftovers. And I don't know about you, uh, uh, but in my community, uh, all those ladies uh, cook more than enough. Uh, my grandmama would cook more than enough. Fed had the community in South Carolina. Uh, when she cooked, uh, she cooked more than enough. Uh, it was not just one or two slices of bacon, but it was a whole slab of bacon. It was not just one or two pieces of chicken, but it was enough to feed family for days. That's the way God prepares our table. He's got more than we need. And when dinner is ready and the table is set, somehow everybody gets the word. And when I was in the country, I remember my sister and myself. Daddy would drop us off at Miss Cooper's house and we would play and people were working in the fields and I can remember vividly that many had in the yard something called a dinner bell it was on a pole and you could reach up and shake it and the dinner bell would alert everybody that it was time to come on in and eat and when the bell rang everybody was reminded that the table was set and dinner was served application anticipations were heightened expectations would cause you to salivate and hurry up because you knew that something good was in store and coming from the field you would take a quick wash up wash your face and your hands and mama would always check my hands boy go back and put some soap and water on your hands because you didn't dare come to the table with a nasty hands nor a nasty face because dinner was being served yes sometimes as they were walking from the fields somebody would strike up a song that said it's getting late in the evening and the sun is going down but for those who lived in the city if you were playing under the street lights or in the projects and you heard big mama's voice you would cut through a few backyards over the fence to rush to the back door you were excited about getting home because dinner was ready and the table was set one evening in the upper room the dinner table was set and the Savior was ready for the table and as a child of God as saints we eat from the Lord's table every first Sunday we're eating from God's dinner table now to get the table Table ready. Uh, Jesus uh, uh, had to live uh, 33 long years uh, to get the table ready. He suffered uh, the humiliation of the critics uh, to get the table ready. Uh, he had to pick up uh, uh, an old rugged cross uh, and walk uh, this road uh, to Via Della Rosa, uh, carrying it uh, to Golgotha's Hill uh, to get the table ready. He 
he had to die out on Calvary uh, but that's not the end of the story because early Sunday morning uh, he arose from the grave uh, with all power in his hands uh, so as I leave you this morning uh, let me remind you uh, one more time uh, that the table is ready uh, I said the table is ready uh, there is no doubt in my mind uh, that the table uh, is prepared uh, perhaps the looming question uh, the relevant question uh, still remains uh, are we uh, ready for the table uh, the word of God uh, reveals uh, a righteous remedy uh, for the ruin uh, a heavenly hope uh, for the hopeless uh, a sure salvation for the sinner a genuine grace for the guilty the Lord gives us an assured acquittal for the accused a priceless pardon for the prisoner a wonderful way for the wayward a holy help for the helpless a delight for deliverance for those who are doomed a victorious victory for the victim a bliss blessing for the burden a caring compassion for the condemned a celestial cure for the criminal a comforting concern for the corrupt a free forgiveness for the fugitive a jubilant jubication for the judge a lasting love for the lovely a sincere solution for the shameful the table is set dinner is served and all who you have to do is believe and accept Jesus as your personal savior and anytime you leave the dinner table it's good manners it's good protocol my mama taught me if you get up you got to give some thanks uh, if it's a scrumptious meal uh, if you enjoyed uh, the delectable uh, uh, good good collard greens uh, and the ham uh, and the turkey uh, the least you can do uh, is tell uh, uh, the one that provided uh, that I appreciate uh, I just want uh, to say thank you if you are able uh, to look back over your life uh, and see where the Lord uh, uh, protected you over here made a way over over there open up a door back here the least you can do uh, is tell God uh, thank you uh, I don't want to leave the table uh, that you provided uh, you made ways for me uh, you opened up doors uh, and I just want to say uh, uh, thank you Lord uh, anybody in the house uh, want to give God some praise uh, when you look back from where you come from uh, hadn't God been good uh, didn't he open up a door uh, hadn't he made a way uh, didn't he provide for you didn't he heal your body uh, do I have a witness somebody ought to say yeah can you give him uh, some glory in the house uh, can you say thank you uh, for what you've done Thank you, Lord. I just want to praise you for your mighty acts. I want to praise you according to your excellent greatness. Let everything, let everything, help me somebody. Let everything that had breath, yeah, praise the Lord. Put your hand together and give God some praise in the house won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it won't he believe 
the tears uh, uh, that she shed in midnight won't he make a way out of no way won't he do it just when you think that it can't be done trust in the Lord with all your might and lean not to your own understanding do I have a witness ain't that all right won't he work it out somebody ought to say yeah yeah yes he will look at your neighbor say neighbor yes he will i don't know what you're going through but god will oh yes he will i tried him bob I've tried him punching. I've tried him, and I know that the Lord will. Yeah! If he makes food and puts it on your table, you ought to take some time to tell the Lord thank you thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord if I never had a problem I'd never know that God could solve it but through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to lean upon his word. Do I have a witness in here? Come on, let's give God some glory just one more time. Dinner is ready. Woo! Y'all need to stop. Yes, we 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 gotta we gotta show. We gotta serve the Lord's supper. Supper, but Lord knows I feel thankful right now. I, I feel I feel thankful, Margo, because God has been so good to me. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. And I'm so thankful right now for my health and my strength. I've had a few ups and I've had some downs. But my good days, my outwave my bad days. And I'm not going to complain because God has been so good. Anybody in here can witness with me that the Lord has been good. And I don't know how to enumerate and list all of his goodness. I'm saying that he's been good. And I thank him for everything. I'm, 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 I'm going on I, I know some got chicken in the oven that the Lord prepared I said Reverend go on, go on get with it now but the Lord has been so good I don't mind taking a little time to thank him that's social etiquette just to say thank you for health and strength you may not have everything that you want but Lord knows the Lord provided what you need 
Come on, you can give a hand clap for that. Ain't that right, Johnny? He gives us what we need. Because I learned, Reverend, I'm glad that God didn't give me everything I wanted. Because I didn't know how to handle it. But he knows better than I. Because he's able. He's not restricted by time nor space. He knows what's in the road. And how to navigate you around that won't. He knows how destructive that would be. Not only to you, but others around you. Sometimes he says, not at this time. You got to be able to accept that. That it may not come when you want it. Help me preach this. Maybe it's down the road that God opens up. I've got to wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You got to learn. That's a process. Stop acting like petulant children, demanding that God come right now. The Lord works in his own time, don't he, baby? And in his own way. Come on, move this for me. When he gets ready, because he knows the road, he knows the landscape. Just like he stopped Balaam, dispatching angels, said, go down there and stop Balaam. Balaam was a fool on a mule in the middle of the road. The angel allowed the donkey to talk. Now I hope the Lord won't have to go to that extreme with me, but if he does, Sister Julie, it's all right. Because I want to listen to him. Thank you, Lord. As we are preparing the table, this young man, Anthony Polite, is with us today and wishing. I'm going to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's going to give his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. That's worthy of a praise in this house. Thank you. He comes to us wishing to be baptized. Amen. He says yes. He didn't have to stutter. God is moving in his life right now. Man, I want you to know that we love you and God loves you. The deacons are going to counsel with you. But this decision that you made this morning is the most important decision that you will make in a lifetime. Trust me. And we're going to be with you. I don't just say that as, but we will be with you. We will walk with you. Deacons, associate ministers, congregation will throw their arms around you and love you. Amen. So let's welcome him one more time. I want you to sit right there on that front row. And we're going to get back with you. Take care of him, Dee. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank
thank God for his grace and his mercy. The table has been set symbolizing God's provisions to remind us It is open to the whole of humanity. It speaks of his broken body and his blood. Come on up and be with us, Rev. We thank God for his mercy and most of all for doing for us that which we were not in a position to do for ourselves. You were not able to buy your salvation. Number one, because salvation is free. It took a personality equal to whom the debt was owed. You got that? Moses couldn't pay it. None of the progenitors of the faith, those, they couldn't pay it. It could only be paid by Jesus who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, made of himself no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. And through him and his redemptive act, he said, nobody took my life, I gave it up freely. But it purchased our salvation church you got to appreciate that. He was setting the table all along. So as we partake, it's symbolic. It, 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 it symbolizes, this is my blood, this is my body. It puts you somewhere around the cross to behold the drama of that moment as the sun refused to shine, moon dripped away in blood, and the earth reeled and rocked. saints from old were seen walking the streets of Jerusalem. Graves opened up. It was a significant day. And we celebrate that same Jesus that hung on the cross was placed in a borrowed tomb and got up on the third day morning. That's why the distraught disciples out there fishing, going back to what they knew until they looked across in the hazy mist of the morning with tired eyes. Someone asked, hey, children, you, you catch anything? No, we've toiled all night come up with empty nets. Cash your nets on the other side. And they pulled. Some jumped in to go meet Jesus when they recognized him. 
make sure that you recognize the Lord when he comes. Let us bow, God, we thank you for this table that has already been set. We partake now of your body and blood. And in doing so, we show forth our allegiance to you and you alone. Because in our darkest and most troubling moments, you've been with us. You gave your life for us, a ransom. And we want to say thank you before we partake. As often as you do this, Lord, you said, remember you. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember me was the command. It was more than just remembering a historical figure. But in the call to remember, he was talking about remembering the suffering, remembering the healing. Remembering the compassionate spirit. After Jesus blessed the bread and the wine, he said of the bread, after he broke it, he said, take, eat, this is my body. And likewise, the wine, after he had blessed it, he said, this is the New Testament in my blood as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Let the church say amen. You ought to feel better now. You ought to feel a little more connected. Because we have communed together. 
I know it was the blood. You know I know it was the blood for me. One day, one day when I was on Jesus died on the cross, and I know, I know it was the blood for me. We're getting ready to go home now. We have a young lady here who moved from New York and is now in Greensboro. And she just wanted to come to church. I happened to catch her call. What's your name again, baby? Akina. Akina. She got here, and I thank Barry for picking her up this morning, and we're so glad. We want you to know how appreciative we are that you are him. And we're going to get you home now, and we're going to figure out how to get you here every Sunday, all right, that you want to come. Amen. everybody we don't give benediction the Lord's Supper I'm gonna just say I'm glad to see you this morning and we will see you if the Lord allows next Sunday or at, at Bible study or Sunday school or those other events you ought to come you will be blessed. God bless you. We love you. God loves you.